What is up YouTube? In this video, let's cover the basics of Pandas, which is a data manipulation library used in Python. Pandas is a library that's not only very important for data scientists, but also comes in handy as a data engineer. All right, before we move to the tutorial, let's look at why Pandas is kind of an important tool to have for data engineers. Let's try to cover this with a couple of examples. Uh, example one, for example, you're working on a project that requires you to analyze some kind of sales data, which is not there in a system. As a data engineer, you have other pipelines in place where you're kind of pulling all this data uh, for different areas of the company, but this specific sales data for a specific month, probably the pipeline failed and it's kind of arriving in a CSV format via some shape folder. And it seems like the columns and everything is different because uh, the regular pipe wasn't working. So in this case, you first need to go into this data set and kind of look into uh, what kind of columns are there are, what kind of rows there are, if, if the data is kind of useful or not, or if the data is corrupted. So in these kind of cases when the data is not as huge, Pandas really comes in handy because opening these kind of files with Excel is cumbersome and slow, but using Pandas kind of uh, takes away that pain. And then you'll be able to analyze all these columns if they exist and you even able to map them. You can do certain simple counts and you can easily do aggregates to kind of figure out what are the issues with the file and if the file is kind of okay to proceed with. Yeah, as for the example shared, as you can easily see, Pandas kind of becomes really essential tool uh, for data engineers in general. Also, let's look at some general benefits, how this Pandas library is kind of really useful. So things it helps you with is data manipulation. So as I mentioned, you have multiple different data sets. You can plug and play from multiple sources and then come in and manipulate this data. If you want to filter out some null values, you can easily do it with a simple command. Uh, so this kind of manipulation is very easy to do and there's not a lot of boilerplate syntax at least, specifically with using Python. Second benefit would be data analysis. So as a data engineer, uh, you don't only load this data, but you sometimes need to get into the business logic of how the data is kind of coming. You need to kind of create some features uh, which are kind of useful for other uh, fellow teammates in the company. So for that cases, you can easily use Pandas to read this data uh, it can be file at any other source like SQL table or whatnot. And then you can read this data and analyze it, do quick aggregates using group buys, uh, max counts, something like that. And then you can easily build a small analysis of the data set you've got. Third one is data visualization. Using Pandas, you can use other uh, libraries such as Matplotlib to kind of visualize this data very easily. So they integrate really well and you can easily make bars and charts in your workspace. So yeah, uh, another point is integration with other libraries. So Pandas is a very diverse and very well thought through uh, library in general, a framework in general. So it, it you as a source it can connect to various different sources, which includes APIs, RPCs, Excel files, uh, databases, data warehouses, etc. So you can easily connect to those using a Pandas and read it into like a data frame. That's the object there. And then essentially once you, you've done with the manipulation, you can easily save it into any other file format, save it into database and whatnot. Last but not the least is performance. Uh, for relatively sm smaller data set, I'm not talking about big data, uh, but data that can be fit, that can fit in memory. Uh, Pandas is kind of really efficient um, with managing that kind of data in local in memory because it behind the scenes, it kind of uses NumPy. It essentially uh, is kind of really efficient with doing all these operations on different arrays and data structures within that data frame. All right, now that we have learned why data engineers need to learn Pandas, let's jump into some of the basics of using Pandas in Jupyter Notebook. To get started with Pandas, you will need three things. First would be a text editor of your choice. It can be a very simple text editor such as Notepad. My preferred tool of choice is Visual Studio Code, which kind of looks like this. Uh, you can use a very simple Notepad if you want. Second thing you would need is you would need to install Python. You can go to python.org and install the relevant version. That's one of the thing. So installing Python is not that hard. You, there are very multiple ways. <clears throat> Mac actually comes pre-installed with Python. But the best place is to kind of go to python.org. This is your, where you'll find all the versions of Python that exist. Um, like try to download the latest stable version. So you can just click on it and it will route you to which kind of system you want to install Python on, Windows, Mac, or any other. In my case, I'm using Mac OS. So yeah. The third thing you will need is installing the library using pip. So pip is like a package manager uh, in Python. So Python allows you to install all these different packages using pip and you can just write down a few commands to install that kind of code. 
And after you've done that, you can um, install any other libraries such as pandas, numpy, etc. And that's what we're going to do. All right. So first come first, let's click on our text editor and let's create a folder for this. So I'm, I'm, my plan is to new folder introduction to pandas. This is what the tutorial is about. Right. All right. Uh, so yeah. So first thing you would need to do is kind of create a file so you can create any other file. Let's do main.py. That's kind of a general practice, but you can keep any other name main.py. Yeah, this is how we're going to try to write down code. So the first thing you need to do is start with import installing and importing libraries, installing and importing library. So uh, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code, which also has a way of running commands like uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Using this syntax, you can create a cell. It's very similar to Jupyter Notebook. You can just see it as running some kind of Python code. So the first thing you need to do is do a pip install pandas and numpy. If I you do it, it's going to run an environment for you and it's going to install all the packages going forward. So let me just click on install. Yeah, let's just wait for this to finish. All right. <clears throat> so the installation is complete. As you can see, uh, these were the libraries that were installed pandas version. And then there was a numpy that was installed because we specified it. And there are a few libraries would have been installed such as pi tz, uh, where like this pandas library might be dependent on. So yeah, it automatically figures it out. Like you don't have to worry much. Sometimes you run into issues, but uh, that's a problem for a uh, future you, I guess. So yeah, this is how the first installation of the library look like. Next step is to import these packages into the environment, right? So the way you're going to do is you just do import pandas SPD. Yeah, that's the first step and import numpy as NP. Yeah, this is the step you kind of do it. People do it in the same um, line, but I kind of prefer it this way. So yeah, the first step has been done. I uh, click on shift enter. So it will run this command. This is how I'm kind of working my way through. Let's just wait for this to import. It should be as yes. maybe my computer is recording. That's why it's taking time. All right. So the first step has been done as a part of the next, we would need to read data from somewhere, right? So essentially pandas is used to kind of read some data and manipulate over it. So you need a data set to kind of work your way through, right? You need a data set to just test things out. So uh, as an example, I'm going to leave a link in the description as well. Let me just move here. As an example, uh, Seaborn, there's a library visualization library, which is called Seaborn has also has like list of public data. So let's try to use one of it. Maybe, maybe let's use uh, taxis.csv and try to look into this data. So we can click on it and look into it and we can also use uh, pandas to look into it. So you can see it's a CSV. It's not very intuitive to read, right? So if you look on it and then uh, you look into this raw file, it's not as very easy to read. You can see the columns on the top and then the values, right? So let's uh, go back uh, to our editor and try to read this data. So I need to build a URL for it. So let me just copy and paste this URL and use it for taxis. So let's try to read this. So the good thing about pandas is you can just read it like um, pd.read csv. Uh, you can either pass a local path or you can just pass in the URL and it's, it, it will basically read it for you. So we call it a data frame. Like that's kind of a ad hoc standard right now for me to run. But let's see how it looks like, right? So let's read and print. So if I just do diff df, it's going to just write down the data frame. All right. So on the right, you can see I've printed, I've read the data already. It's in my system now. I picked up the data and you can see the columns, pick up, drop off, passengers, etc. I can also go into this Jupyter variables console to look into this data. So this is a feature of um, Visual Studio Code. So you can click on it and it's gonna kind of visualize the whole data frame for you in this editor, which is nice, nice to have. So you can see uh, there are six, four, three, three rows and 14 columns. So a lot of the times you need to read some kind of data and try to figure your way out from it. So this is how it looks like. If I am, so yeah, you can see index, pick up, drop off, passenger, how much distance the cab ran, fare, tip, tolls, total color of the car, uh, payment done, 
pick up from drop off to so there are a few zones right pick up zones etc so this is how the <coughs> data looks like when you read it from uh, like a pandas data frame. so essentially it looks like a, an excel right so so this is how it looks like so let's we can do a few things let's list out the columns dot let's do diff df dot columns and then you'll have a list of columns you can work with right so if i just do df dot columns on the right it should print all the columns yeah let's see so yeah let's try to do a few manipulations on over it so yeah we can do some kind of filtering you can see there's a distance there's fair. Let's go back to the view, right? And then you can figure it out. So I want to see, um, you can just filter out data. Like you can just click on it and filter, and then you can use it pandas to filter out. So I want to filter out on all the rows where payment has been done only with cash. So let's look at how many rows were there where the payment was done only with cash. So if the way it is done is DF filtered, we call it cash payments. You can do DF and DF, and then we can specify the columns and filter it. So you can specify this column, which is payment. It should be equal to cash. Let's try to filter it out and let's filter cash payments. All right. Out of uh, 6,400, there's only 1,800 rows where payment was done with cash. So these kind of insights you can get very easily and quickly. There's a lot of depth to how the type of insights you can do, but let's try to keep it simple. So yeah, and uh, if you just want to see a few columns only, it's like a filter is like a where clause in SQL. And then uh, if you want to just print out a few columns, you can just do it by typing only the column name. So I just want to specify those columns. I just want to print where the payment was done in cash. Uh, for example, let's go on the right. Let's see pick up zone and drop off zone. So pick up zone drop off something like that so let's see let's try to print this again so what it's going to do it's going to just uh, fill the uh, filter for only these two columns and bring it back in the same object so in the same place now you'll only have two columns so you can see all these uh, uh pick up and drop off points right so cash payments so yeah there are only 1800 rows but then there are, these are the pick up zone and drop up zone you can do a lot more manipulations but let's stick to one right now all right so this is essentially the very basics of using pandas right so i would love to go into detail but maybe it's reserved for the next video so as a final thing let's try to save this data somewhere as a csv right so i just have two these two columns on cash payments uh so let's just copy this and i will do a uh, two csvs two csv and i will just write down filtered cash payment with pick up and drop off zone drop off dot csv i'm going to do index equal to false because i don't want to save any index yet because uh, yeah that's all so if i just do shift and enter so it's just data frame that's a data frame object if you see dot two csv so if i just shift and enter then it will run here and then cash payments will be saved in this folder. Yeah, exactly. So you can see there's a filtered output. Um, I would like to more go in more detail, but let's uh, reserve it for a future video. All right, and that's it. Now with a few lines of code, you were able to read, manipulate, and save this data easily using Panda. Uh, and I hope this tutorial was kind of really useful for someone who's kind of trying to enter in the field of data engineering slash data science. And yeah, that's about it for this video. If you found value out of this video, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me a lot to push my content to people like you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.